So do you decide on the writing, or is that a fan, is it fan driven? Alone. Just you. <laughs> so I have no, to it's impress our, you. Yeah, clock's ticking, buddy. Where does your journey end? You seek that which would bestow upon you the right to rule. The quest to reclaim a homeland and slay a dragon. Now I happened to be on set in New Zealand on the day that you were shooting pickups for the barrel scene. Oh yes. Uh, now okay. from where I was sitting, it looked like they were just spinning you around in a barrel for easily 90 minutes, just hitting you with green sticks. <laughs> that was a fraction of that uh, of the abuse that they that they poured upon us. Um, we were in a giant washing machine powered by V8 engines, and they were dumping tons of water on us and submerging us under the water. Martin was in the water with an underwater camera. We were out on the Polaris River, um, which was so much fun because the river has a real current. So we were able to yeah. find that current and race each other to the end oh of the God. end of the river. And so no two two takes were ever the same. Um, yeah, it was an extensive sequence and a huge amount of fun. It's almost like Peter Jackson thought they, you guys were having too much fun, and then in pickups wanted to punish you for that fun. Peter Jackson was always punishing us. <laughs> the glee in his face when he poured a ton of real stinky fish on top of myself and Graham McTavish. No. He was having a great day. He was clapping, smiling, laughing, keeping us in there way longer than he needed to. He looks like a nice guy, yeah. but we know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I read something, and I hope you'll tell me if it's true or not, that when you were playing Thorin, that you would dream in character? Yeah, it's it's... I think sometimes because we were working in such isolation and I was, you know, every waking hour we were in the studio, yeah. there was a period when I was having some crazy dreams and, and uh, I remember having a dream with, with which Graham McTavish was in and we were entering th what looked like a concrete nuclear bunker into an underground passage and I think it was a, a sort of a premonition of the of the, uh, the, when they opened the door to Erebor because we hadn't oh, actually yeah. shot that yet. Um, but it was in a sort of futuristic post-dystopian kind of uh, future. So uh, yeah, he, he gets inside your head. I was secretly hoping that Thorin Oakenshield was being really ornery in your dreams. You know, ornery. like Yeah, like going surfing or, you know. You know, I did have a plan uh, when we shot at Mount Ruapehu, it was just at the end of the ski season and I really wanted to ski down the mountain dressed as Thorin. I think that would have been a, a cool <laughs> shot. You know, that's how he passes the time on the Lonely Mountain is he gets his dwarf skis out and comes hurtling down. <laughs> and they'd have to be really short skis. Well, yeah. I don't know. I think he's an adventurous... He's probably a bit of an off-pister. And, uh, you know, he could have grabbed hold of that dragon and done some heli-skiing. Dra draggy skiing. <laughs> with, and with fire to propel with you. With fire? Can you imagine? That would be an amazing shot. And then with no one could follow on the slopes behind you. The snow would be gone. Because the snow would be melted. <laughs> <laughs> would all be gone. And one of the things that I think about with Thorin is is how weighed down he is by his history and by and his, his costume. Yeah, and his go costume. on. Sorry, that was serious. Go on. His history. <laughs> but like you know, his knowing what his father and his grandfather have been through. And I was wondering if there was something that you think you have inherited from your real life father. Um. Oh, that's a dangerous territory. <laughs> um. Of course. I mean, I think you know we carry some of the burdens of our parents and maybe they are unfulfilled dreams or you know wishes that they that they haven't uh, achieved and certainly with Thorin that's what he carries with him when he walks right. into a room he carries all of the failings of his father and his grandfather um, but out of love for them and loyalty to his people he he makes that attempt he risks his life to to reclaim that on well, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a positive side to it, and so that was more my intention with the question. It's like something nice that you've it's, inherited from your father. I, it's true, and I think because we were always trying to make our p parents proud, or, or, you know, and uh, uh, Thorin's father's lost, for, as far as he's concerned, but the memory of him is something that he needs to honor, and, uh, uh, he, you know, that's why he takes on the quest.